This is for the nerds. This is for the brainiacs. This is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it back. You ain't gonna touch me. You're not gonna do nothing. You are not above me. I bet you wish you was me. I know it. I know. What is poppin', everybody? And welcome to another ex- episode of the Only Friends Podcast, where I'm here with my only friends. And you know, we're here to get it popping today. We got a bunch of shit for you. Landon. We're only here with some of the only friends It's today. true, it's true. Some of the only friends. Um, Missing a few it's pieces. Most, most of the only friends. I think the dark side is currently in LA playing some cash games. Mm-hmm. And um, the Malaysian ankle biter is currently <laughs> um, in his house doing something. I'm not sure what he's doing. But he said he was coming today. He fucking lies. He did this say that, time, man. Yeah. Look what he... This is wrong. And it's just... This is empty just, and dark over, and that's the seats over there. This mm-hmm. is just absolutely yeah. wrong. We'll talk to Andre about this. That's soon. the dark side corner. That is the dark side <laughs> corner. Right now. It's too dark side. What's popping, Landy? You know, uh, uh, what are we up to? Well, went to the Halloween party yesterday right. after uh, going to dinner for a friend who's going to get married tomorrow. Oh, sweet. Who's your friend? Uh, Jeremiah. Oh, well, congratulations, Jeremiah. Nice. Shout out to him. I've actually never been to a wedding. Wow. Never been to a wedding? I've been to one, I think, and I was like six, and it was my um, aunt and uncle. So other than that, I'm with you. Wow. That's I've been to like to me. 20, and they yeah. all suck. <laughs> <laughs> Weddings are the fucking worst. <laughs> Alan, are Alan, awesome. Alan Berry's was the only one that was really good. He How blew it out. Ba- Shout out to the Yinzers there's, in the building. Free alcohol, free food, <laughs> music, dancing. I mean, what is not to like about a wedding? That's, that's, that's like what... It, that's how they get you. That's, is that's that how they, they, they tell me. you that there's free alcohol and food. It, all, all it is is a lot of fucking hurting people into an area and then sitting through a ceremony and then hurting people into another area. Oh, yeah, yeah, you skip the ceremony. You know, you skip mm. the church. You go straight to the reception. Right, right. That's, that's, that's how they do <laughs> it. I had fun at Simmons' wedding. Yeah. But I, I was right. young and all the girls Skimpies there were single. Skimpy's was great. Ah, Skimpy's was great. <laughs> yo, wow. Yo, why I mean, it was, it was a nice like wedding. It, don't, it was beautiful, but like, you know. I met Michelle at a wedding. You might meet your future, uh, you know. Your future, you, can, you, future might have your, you might find your future wife yeah, at, a, at wedding a wedding and then get married. Right. That's usually how it happens. My though. future wife was certainly at the When We Were Young festival and I forgot to go. <laughs> yes. Man. So, That's real funny. quick, can you. That's what you get when you let your heart win. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. For no, sure, she was no, there. But no. I mean, I've heard we'll about that out in yeah. uh, post production. Obviously, that was the only place he was going to be there. <laughs> I've heard about like wedding dates, and apparently, that's a thing. People like to be a wedding date, but I don't get to have a plus one. But can you explain to me, Brian, the allure of a wedding date? Um, I, I would never take like someone that I wasn't actually dating or like a girlfriend to a wedding i think it'd be awkward because then you would have to like you know if they didn't know other people there then you just have to be like attached to them the entire time you can't just leave them that's okay you know i don't know yeah i i think I've, more of a plus one is 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 pretty much for your significant i've always though. been hard on lamana's side where it was like you go to a wedding you're gonna meet some girls like you, you don't want to take sand to the beat no totally hard disagree okay hard disagree the only thing that can make a wedding tolerable is taking a date. Mm-hmm. I've taken a date twice. I've enjoyed those weddings both tremendously. They weren't that exciting of weddings. Wait, otherwise. it was just some like uh, like a date, like a first or second date. No, uh, I guess first would be like kind of. I mean, but... that just seems insane. Yeah, but yeah. one was just a girl that like I was seeing pretty casually. Uh, okay, I, t- well, I took her to Mercier's wedding, and that was. A blast. Yeah, I mean that 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 maybe that's different. That that's kind of what I mean. Like if you're actually seeing somebody, then then yeah, but not as like a date to get to know somebody. Not as a cold open hear, date. What, what, <laughs> who the fuck was talking about swiping and then just you know, <laughs> hey, you want to meet me at a wedding? <laughs> like you added a, a lot of context here that I don't think anyone was considering. Okay, then. I mean, I think you Fine. just started a whole fucking uh, in a whole app. Find your I wedding got, date. I got duped by the movie Wedding Crashers. I thought like every wedding was gonna be like that. Like you know, you have you have your pickings. You 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 just show up. You're like the most eligible bachelor. All these girls are just like you know, 
in in well, you have marriage have the, mode. And, you have to have the charisma of Vince Vaughn. No, no, you have to have <laughs> single girls, and there are no fucking single girls at weddings. Yes, there, there, are. Are. <laughs> uh, there was a single girl at uh, the wedding in Turks and Caicos. Yeah, wow. you found her. <laughs> yep, I got it. <laughs> you found the one and only. I used to have a good friend growing up where his sisters, he had like three sisters older than him, and there used to be like a wedding venue down the block from their house, maybe like two miles. And they used to go every single weekend and crash fucking weddings and have a goddamn blast. Amazing. He used to come back and just tell us about fucking. Yeah. It was great. Absolutely great. Shout out to this month's sponsor, WPT Global. The online home of the WPT World Poker Tour. And as some of you guys may know, we're going to be giving away a 12K package. $12,000. We have a contest going on later on in this episode where we're going to be giving away a 12K package. One of you guys in the chat. How do they enter? How do they? Well, I'm glad you put your ass, Brian. (laughs) I don't like your tone. If you're a subscriber, you're already entered. If you're a member of our brains and nerds and brainiacs community, you get a 10x entry. Oh, so you hit that join button. You got to hit that join button. Mm-hmm. You find that join button, you hit it. So like, subscribe, join, show us some love here at the Only Friends Podcast. We're trying to get you some seats. Seats, Burke. Yeah. You doing your work on that? Yeah. So. Uh... You know, when I first got approached by WPT Global, they were like, hey, we have this Sunday satellite. It gives away eight seats. We'd love to have you play it and stream it. <clears throat> and, um, you know, uh, if you win the seats, you have to give it away, but we'll give you some compensation. I was like, oh, yeah, sounds great. Like, I play on Sundays anyway. Mm-hmm. It'll just incentivize me. Then I realized they run these giveaways every day. Every day. So every day they're giving away a seat. And every day there's an overlay. Or, lay, or yeah, an overlay. Uh, so it's like every day there's a, a single table satellite, basically. Mm-hmm. It's a 500 dollars buy-in for one seat. And it's like, well, I have free entry to those, too. And there's like five weeks left. I mean, what more could you be You're doing? Just gonna... I'm just going to try to break them. Yes. <laughs> Yo, WPT Global, shout out. I appreciate you guys sponsoring us. I'm going to try to break you. I'm going to win... 40 seats. <laughs> you heard bad. it here first. <laughs> you Wait, so it. Let's, I'm let's on do the, the grind. numbers on that. How many, how many days are available of seats? I and think then... there's like 33 days left. Okay, so if there's 33 days and there's one, turn, one satellite a day, so you yeah. can win a maximum 30, of 33. 33 seats. Yeah, but so I, you can't I win two. 40. Okay, but I'm going to win 35. 35 seats. <laughs> so if we crunch those numbers, 35 times 12. Yeah. The weekday ones it's are a little tougher to win, probably, right? A little bit. I mean, it's only one seat. only one seat. That's right. like... I'm a winner take all kind of guy though, you know, so I'm I'm mm-hmm. here for it. So yeah, like you know, I could basically win just shy of four hundred K. Yeah. Worth and give of, it all away. And give it all away. Give it all away. You know what they to say? Our beautiful Shoot for the moon and if you miss you land among the stars. That's right. So no, I think it's if, the other way. If you shoot for the stars, <laughs> if you shoot for the stars, you'll land on yeah, the moon. Yeah, the stars are further away. Yeah. Right, I but I, I, I actually think it's landed. I think it's shoot for the moon. I think he's right. I will, I will bet you twenty dollars. Aim for the Done. stars, shoot Done. for the moon. It was Pop Smoke's album. That is not uh, what sorry. we're talking about. What, <laughs> what you said is not a thing at all. It's shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, I you'll think. land amongst the stars. A hundred percent. I, I think Landon is correct, mm. but I think <laughs> Brian that's Caesar. okay. Wait, that's wait, okay. wait. I got. I'll just transfer Berkey's twenty that he owes me sure. over to you. Uh, uh, let's see. Look what it says. Shoot for the moon. Yes. Even if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. So, uh, so, but now you can find a different right, right. So, so <laughs> Land, I, I, I agree that Landon's correct, but I think Brian is scientifically correct. Don't worry scientific. about scientifically. I'm going to find a phrase. Like, and that's, that. that's the problem with these banal pr- platitudes is mm-hmm. they're made by some dumb teenage girl who's all up in her wow. fields Tumblr. that says something like, shoot for the moon, and if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. <laughs> Not realizing that the fucking stars are further away. Well, mm-hmm. it sounds like that just made me $20. It so did. thank you, Tumblr. Thank well, you. we'll see. I got to do my research. <laughs> yeah, it's <just> some more <laughs> Not giving up that easy. Yeah, send them some more links, you know. So you can give out $400,000. If I do well, yeah. If you do well. And even, let's say, you know what? Let's say you win 10% of them. Yeah. So we'll give away $40,000. We've already given away twenty four. Look at that. $24,000. This is the second fucking seat being given away. Mm-hmm. I mean, realistically, you're probably going to win, like, at least five or six or eight or can, ten. Can I tell you, <laughs> like, this, this, uh, <laughs> I, I will say that this, this this whole setup with WPT Global really uh, taps into me as a person. Like I'm I'm starting to understand myself better. So I had a huge weekend. I won 
uh, almost a quarter million dollars. Humble brag. Humble brag. Humble. Uh, and I was happy about that. Yeah. But when I got on the flight, I was sleep deprived. I couldn't wait to get home, get in bed. And the next day, once I was rested and everything else, it was just a job well done. Right. Yeah. Just another day. I was happy for you. Yeah, but you know, there wasn't like <laughs> there wasn't a lot of serotonin running through me. Like it just happened, and I know that I'm going to get back to work, and it's going to happen again, and I'm going to lose a quarter million somewhere along the way. Whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Winning these seats <laughs> gives me a sense of pleasure that I cannot describe. Of course, yeah. like why? Because I get to give it away. Yeah, yeah it's not like he gets to lose right. it. He gets to give it to somebody. Yeah. Give somebody. A I chance. can't explain to you how hard I try in these satellites. <laughs> I tr trust me. I know. I know you very well. You, it's a hundred percent. Because like in poker, it's so zero sum and it's so selfish and everything else. And it's like this is an opportunity where like I'm slightly monetarily incentivized. Like it's not a big number and it doesn't matter to me that much. Yeah, but I do get a little bit by winning the seat. But both both satellites. So I get six entries into each satellite. Both that I've won, one entry. Yeah. I try so hard. Yeah. You're not just blasting. No. And I'm right. losing on the side on WSOP. Yeah. Like I'm playing a full <laughs> Sunday schedule, rocketing <laughs> off like 5K on the oh Sunday schedule. God. Like, uh. and I'm still happy when I win the seat, knowing that I lost money on the day. Well, you kind of. I mean, you get some of it back. A little reimbursement. A when you little, win the not seat. all of it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking tilted man it's because you're a charitable individual and you get to feel like you're finally doing something i just think i'm in the wrong field <laughs> no, no, mm -hmm. you know what it is you're too good for poker i don't think wow. that's I, I don't think that that's true but i do think that i'm being underserved or underutilized in this space for sure how would you rather be utilized i don't know but it's clear that <laughs> collecting money is not my ambition in life yeah, but we, not, we figured that out very, very quickly. But I'm not rich enough to not try to collect money. You and me both, buddy. Right. So. <laughs> also, when you, when you play like a zero-sum game, there's like a morality kind of thing there. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's like, well, when I win, then I ha somebody else has to lose, right? Where here is, yeah, somebody else has to lose, but at least you give it away. <laughs> right, right. They can lose but still win, yeah. like the guy that you busted. Oh, with the... I feel so bad. Well, there might be other people that are also getting... I think uh, I would have colluded for that guy if I knew. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, don't say that. I think I would have, like, My because gosh. he was the big blind when I was a small blind, I think I would have just folded to him once. <laughs> like, just once. Just give him one shot. That's you know not colluding. I mean? He would have to agree for you to fold to him. It's true. That's true. <laughs> you would just be a nice person. Conspire. Soft colluding. Yeah, yeah. you're just, uh, I remember, just being, you know, more charitable. I remember there was a conversation <laughs> about that where if you're in a tournament and you start explaining to the table kind of how ICM works on a bubble and you start saying, oh, like, you should fold here because if you're one off While the money or whatever. The yeah like they is can't. that collusion yeah. is that cheating right yeah I don't, you can't tell somebody what they should do while the hand's going on if it's before the hand's dealt and you should say you should probably fold i think that would be okay but while the hand's going on yeah. that's where the line is drawn anyways for me anyways yeah, yeah who knows anyways yeah, you just love to give shit away you know we love giving shit away here. We I love do. giving shit away. We do. I, I really, I, I, I'm saying this like beaming inside. I know. Like I'm genuinely excited to give the seat away. It's fucking It's dope. weird. It, it's a weird thing because like this is so meaningless in the greater scheme of things. Like, you know. This is, is it? Yeah, it's just a thing that is going to happen and some, but like in my, in my head, there's a sense of romanticism. Yeah. Like I romanticize so many, so many different elements where it's like. <laughs> I know what it was like being an up and comer, you know, where it was like my aspiration to play a WPT. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm just imagining myself at 24, watching a podcast, winning a 12K package, flying out to Vegas. Boom. It's the biggest thing that's ever happened to me. Cashing the event, rubbing elbows with other pros. Like back then it was like, you know, the Negranus and the Lingrens and the Ivies and yeah. the Antonius's, Doyle right? Bunting. Like just running into them. Like when I won my, when I won my first, uh, entry into the WSOP main. Mm -hmm. I threw my fucking laptop in the air in celebration. Yeah, same, same. <laughs> I mean, it was like the, it was the same time period. Yeah, no, it was, was on. Like, it was. It was. You went on stars, and I won. No, I won a party to? poker. Oh, party poker. Man, they took care of me too. But uh, I was three handed. It was a thirty three dollar rebuy, and it was two seats. Okay. And I got three handed, and I jammed like king ten blind versus blind. I got called by ace ten. I remember this. I'll I'll never forget it. Uh, I jammed king ten. Blind versus blind, get called by ace 10. You have him covered? I have him covered, but barely. Hmm. And drill a king. And my Ooh. laptop just <laughs> sails in the air. <laughs> I'm screaming because, like, I can't explain to you what it was like in 2006 to aspire to play. Like, it was the 
biggest thing in the world. Yeah. And as a kid, mm -hmm. you had no way to play the World Series. Like you just didn't. Do, I mean, we would go travel to our local room at Salamanca, and everybody would talk about the main event. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and only the couple rich whales of the game would be like, "Yeah, I'm going out." Remember, uh, I, I can't remember his name, but he cashed with one chip. Oh yes. Oh my God! And he's uh, actually they, there's a footage of him, yeah. like on like yeah, yeah holding, up the, holding up the one chip, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. anti chip. Mm -hmm. uh, so like only they had the luxury of going to play the main event, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, you know we both won our seats that year, so like mm -hmm. we got to be a part of the whales, kind of. You know, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, got, you know, you know what I think it is for you is I think you really enjoy providing opportunity for others. Yeah, I think that's true. And it's so, when you say that the main event story and talk about how difficult it was as someone that was young to try to play the main, it's something that I just have an inherent oversight for because to the main for me and my career seems like something that I most certainly cannot miss ever and it would be irresponsible to. Right. So there's definitely like not a sense of uh, squandered opportunity, but not realizing how big of an opportunity things are in the first place, just because of the lack of perspective. Yeah, for for yeah. for your generation, it would be like getting to play the million dollar one drop. Yeah, yeah, right. Because you guys can find money. That's anywhere. crazy. At his age, it's crazy. When he's coming up. Right? We were talking yeah. about this last night at dinner. Uh, I, I was saying like how different uh, high stakes has has become, and like why, um, why it's it's headed into a bit of a death spiral. Uh, now we were at dinner, it was like Venom, Jeremiah, uh, like all this, the young up and comers, right? Yeah. So uh, the average age of the table is like 25 mm -hmm. and all of them have access to playing high stakes. And, you know, they're basically talking about like shifting into tournaments because it's still open and cash is going private, yada, yada, yada. I go, yeah, you have to understand like the reason why the hustle to make cash games so private now is because the barrier of entry has been stripped. And like, what do you mean? I was like, well, when I first started playing high stakes cash in 2013, um, it wasn't just about being a good enough player to compete at those stakes, right? Yeah. You had to be able to acclimate yourself to the, to the situation. You had to be able to be affable and liked enough to get invited back and also provide enough action. Mm -hmm. But on top of all of that, uh, you had to be able to financially get in, yeah. right? So it's like when I, first started, playing, yeah, when I first started playing <laughs> yeah. 3612, like I had a half a million dollars. You can't play with that. Yeah. So I had to find backing and I had to find millions of dollars in backing. And it was hard. Mm -hmm. It was a hard, like a hard road to go down. Right. And I was like, now if Landon, if that same opportunity presented itself where JRB called up Landon and said, Hey man, I have a seat at three, six, 12 for you today. If it goes well, you have a future seat. Landon could get five million dollars raised and like minutes. that we yeah. we saw this happen and even though it went poorly this is what happened when uh i played bill right yeah. when the opportunity came up when the spot came up i had no shadow of a doubt that i could raise x million dollars to play him yeah and, and when it started i literally was like oh this is easy right and yeah right ahead. well so that's the problem right because now back then that would filter out a lot of good players mm -hmm. yeah right so a lot of the talent just wouldn't have all of the uh, intangibles to get into the game. They were grinding the five ten outside, they, or even or if 10, they were 20, even yeah. if they were able to play like twenty five fifty or fifty a yeah. hundred, right? Like they didn't have access to enough money to go from fifty a hundred to three six twelve. It yeah. was too big of a jump, right. right? And then on top of that, if they ever scrounged up a buy in, which happened a lot, right? There were a lot of guys who got a quote unquote play in Ivy's room. Whereas, like, we'll try this guy out and see if he's one of us. If it just doesn't go good. They would scrounge up a couple hundred thousand and just get fucking wrecked. Yeah. Because they're coming in with two <laughs> or three buy-ins. So hard. Trying to do whatever. They, and they're in a brand new environment, right? So they're expecting, like, okay, this is, this is 10 to 30x the stakes that I usually play. I imagine it's going to be a little bit tougher, a little bit tighter, a little bit this, a little bit that. Yeah, it's a fucking home game where everybody's fucking around. They come in and the average <laughs> opening size is 5X and it's going four ways. And it's like they're squeezing ace 10 off off of, you know, their two buy-ins yeah. and just getting wrecked because it's still going three ways to the flop. And now that, you know what I mean? Yep. So, so many of these guys just like came in, got busted, 
ended up humping 5'10 then for another year or two mm -hmm. before they could ever even take a shot again. So th there was this massive, massive barrier right. that just kept the talent out. Yeah. And that barrier has been completely stripped away. And on top of that, money has now become cheaper and the stakes have gotten lower. So now most of the private games range between like 50, 100 and 200, 400. And there's almost nothing bigger. I remember so getting anybody asked. Can play. Yeah. yeah. I was asked a question a while ago, like maybe a year ago. Um, is it more difficult for you to get funding or find a game that is worth playing at the equivalent stakes? And without a shadow of a doubt, it's always funding. Yeah. The answer is always, oh, sorry, getting in the game. Sorry, the answer yeah. is always getting in the game. The game is going to be the hard part. Getting the money is going to be the easy part. Once you have the network, once you have the, call it, ability to raise the, the money, that's never going to be the issue if you're talented. People want right. to put money behind talent where they see opportunity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it's just a matter of, actually having those spots which then disappear when everything becomes privatized you know who saw some op opportunity taylor swift baby <laughs> taylor swift is on her way to vegas after dropping her new yes. album look at my boy lamana yes he is on the fucking waiting list i, I wake up <laughs> to a text message from michelle she's you know sleeping right next to me i wake up and i look at my phone and a message from her, like what and it's the link <laughs> to sign up to, to register for, to get in line to get a seat. Man. And I was just like, I was like, didn't you do it? She's like, yeah, but you should too. That gives, that doubles our chances of getting good seats. I would, I would love to, to break up with Taylor Swift. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> just to have her write a song about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I just want to go down. Do you and... want that? Do you want that? Absolutely. Do you want to be Jake Gyllenhaal? Absolutely. Oh, I don't know if I'd want to be Jake Gyllenhaal. You look at a song, uh, you get a fucking album. That song is good. That it, song bro. is <laughs> that song is ten minute version. That song is fourteen all, minutes long. It's ten minutes. <laughs> all too well. too well. That's right. I know it all mm -hmm. too well. Yeah. I haven't listened to this yes. album yet. Uh, the new album? No. Okay. Well, th this is an old song from an okay. old album, yeah. but uh, she re she re-recorded her old albums cause, so she could have the rights to them because uh, the music producer ever back fucked in the day her. fucked her over. Gotcha. Um, yeah, but no, then she just came out with a new album and she's coming out with a world stadium tour. When is it? Is. March 25th, so Burke, mm -hmm. whatever you fucking do, do not schedule a- uh, Guys, we have an, an academy, academy. <laughs> uh, March 25th, no, 2020. Well, you know, well, you're going to need somebody else to run it, because uh, I won't be there. I'll, I'll be hanging with the Swifties. Mm -hmm. Enough about your jokes and shit. We are hosting an academy, February 2nd to February right. 5th. Go on over to academy.solfawai.io. Bang. Now. To get, get your five seat. seats, we have left. five seats Only remaining. Five left, they're oh, going fast. That's awesome. Sounds so. good. It's a poker out loud academy. You get to learn from Burke, Chris Convalinka, Chin, Landy, Matt that Hunt. 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 I don't think I'm missing anybody else. Awesome. I'll be there. The tortoise, <laughs> the tortoise. will be there. The tortoise Doing will be there, running need. everything. Mm -hmm. You know, shit's gonna be popping right. tonight. Though, speaking of concerts. Oh, what are we doing tonight? We're going to see Elton John. Oh shit! I'm excited about that too. I saw a. Uh, a clip going viral on Twitter of him. Uh, what was the song? It wasn't so Rocket Man, uh, but he, he was song. performing. He was performing a song. Oh, it was Tiny Dancer. I was gonna say maybe Tiny. Yeah, it was Tiny Dancer. Uh, he was he was performing it live, like he had just gotten the lyrics, or I, I believe the lyrics had just been written, and he decided that he was uh, gonna just put a tune to it. Right then, there he's like, "Oh, it sounds a little something like this," and he just like does it. Like that's how he wrote "Tiny Dancer," essentially, or how he. So put "Tiny it Dancer" was written about <laughs> uh, one of his, like somebody in his entourage, like his, uh, like his mm -hmm. manager, or his, uh, so, so, like one of his partners, whatever. Mm -hmm. It was written about his girlfriend or his wife at the Whoa, time, or, or something along those lines. And he goes, yeah, like, I knew this song was very important to Joe or whatever the fuck his name was. So, you know, we wrote it and yada, yada. And like, now I'm going to put the tune to it right, right now. And, he just and they're just it. filming it, right? <laughs> and he just like goes, and it, it, it's going to sound a little bit something like this. And he just goes into it. And it's just like, holy fuck. Dude, this, like, I've never seen Elton John. I always wanted to see him. This is his farewell tour. How I mean, old is he? He's 75. 70 something, right? Yeah, yeah 75. Looks he great. um He's, they've, he's been on a farewell tour for about three years, but yeah. I think COVID, <laughs> COVID fucked a lot of that up. But uh, right. this is like one of the few times, one of the last times you can get to see him. Where so. are you seeing him at? at? Legion Stadium. I have never been there yet. Where the Raiders, oh, where the Raiders wow. play. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, it's going to be fun. We should go to a... I will report back tomorrow. A little hungover, probably. 
and let you guys know how it went. We should go to a Raiders game soon. They're going to be free soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those Raiders. Oh. Hey, yeah. Man, you think the Steelers are bad. Raiders yeah, are the they worst. stink. They do stink. I mean, there's a lot of shit going Fucking on in the Devontae NFL. Devontae Adams but... lost me my one of my leagues. Hold me close, Tony <laughs> Dan. I've been singing that. that that's all I, how I always sing that song. Did you guys see? You know, um, you know Tony Danza was a porn star? Was no, he? I don't know. I don't know. Danza. I actually don't know if that's true. I think that was Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone. Definitely. Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. It was one yeah. of the Italian actors. Yeah. Yeah. You know. For sure. Grappa heard pro porn star. He just like takes his mic and puts it down. He's like, I'm ready. I'm ready, guy. <laughs> What you should ask me was. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a good fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, you really nailed that, man. Like, I, I was proud of my Landy, but your cuz was fucking good. Oh, like, wait, so what, what, what you should have told me that cuz was. <laughs> the, slap, the slap out of the Puma, like everything was just so fucking perfect uh, about that, man. Talk about Halloween costumes. You see P. Diddy? No. Yo. He wasn't like fucking Landy giving scrambled eggs to um, <laughs> the kids, but P. Diddy got into a little altercation as the Joker, it seems. It goes, Michael He's J. Pussy. Ferguson. He's pussy. 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 Yeah. Well, you, know, you, nigga. <laughs> yeah, him. Just as I said. Yeah. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. You're a clown. <laughs> What's up, baby? Hey, what's up, baby? What's up? You don't like me? Then motherfucker, get to it, nigga. You don't like me, you motherfucking front. Get to it, bitch. Don't fucking play with me on Halloween. I'm out here with love, nigga. You want to have love? It's what up, then, nigga. What's up? Fucking come over here and I'll bust your shit. Nah, hey, keep it pimping. Fucking pussy, make sure you don't never talk to me like that, nigga. I'm love, nigga. Keep it macking, man. Yo. <laughs> all right, so first of all, he's on some astrology shit. I was watching I was watching something like Bad Boy uh twenty year reunion or some shit like Yo, that. No, that's love, baby. This is love. No. Nah. He, he's on some weird like fucking metaphysical shit that like is so annoying he all he talks about is vibrations and energy and like i can't take it but what the fuck did i just watch <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what was that uh, who were those people that was diddy with who though michael, who's, who's he yelling michael at? j ferguson i don't know who that is actor from power 50 oh, okay, cents okay. um hit show. okay and he didn't know that was Diddy, I He assume. did not know that was Diddy. Yeah. So he just thought it was some clown that he just felt like... Randomly jumped on his face. I like that he had face. all his like, minions all dressed all up, too. All dressed like. up. Everybody's like, all dressed up. Like You gotta sit there like, yo, what the fuck? Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> Could you imagine being on the streets of Miami and that's just rolling up on you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yo. You got uh, to change your vibration, man. You got to change the vibrations, man. Connor, you definitely have a Joker laugh in you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. Uh, <laughs> you just wouldn't get it. You got to change your vibration, bro. Yeah, don't be bad because you ain't got the vibration, bro. Uh, yeah. Yo, sports is popping. It's always popping. It's popping Trade right now. Line. It's popping right now. Um, there's a little too much going on in Brooklyn, I will say. Lots of shit going on in Brooklyn. Like, is this too much? It comes down to it that Steve Nash is the one that had to go. Steve Nash and um, Brooklyn Nets have come to a mutual decision where um, he's out as the head coach. Imagine having all that talent and not being able to, you know, get a better record than two and five. Nobody it, really I understands what's going on with the Nets. Yeah, I don't think that's um, his KD fault. KD wants honestly. out. But he's wanted out forever. Yeah, he's wanted out since midsummer. They where, said, where does he, like, where does he, I don't, that whole Thunder lineup that originated, <laughs> right? Like, Harden, KD, Westbrook, KD, KD, Harden, Westbrook. Yep. Uh, there was a fourth, wasn't there? Uh, um, Kendrick Perkins was there. 
Okay. Uh, no, there's those Steve three. Adam okay, I know it was those three, but I thought that there was a fourth as well. But anyway, like they've been nothing but trouble everywhere that they go yep. with the exception. I mean, even KD on the Warriors was like a problem. Like they won a championship, but like he wasn't exactly well received there. Yeah. I mean, he eventually left. Where does he yeah. want to go? I don't know. Apparently the Suns I've heard, which would make sense. You know, another great lineup. Ready My to next chapter. And it's KD with the Suns. Uh, Suns are good. Suns are great. They they, feel, I feel like they're old, though. No, no they, they have book, Booker, which is fucking Aiden? 23 years old. Aiden's like 24. Mm -hmm. They got him in back-to-back -back drafts. That's it's not old, like the though, Jason right? Richardson, old. Steve yeah. Nash, Amari Stoudemire days. Those no, days no, no, no I know that, but like <laughs> CP3's old. Uh, I, I guess I don't know that much about their team. Yeah, um, they, have a lot, they have a lot of young stars. I feel like Dwight Howard's still there somehow. <laughs> <laughs> all, all you knew that was that like Chris Paul is still there, still old, hasn't won a ring. Yeah, like he's old, hasn't won a ring, and I know like Dwight Howard's just like floating through the NBA. <laughs> he's somewhere. Somehow, like I feel Anthony Davis got old overnight. Like I feel like he just became uh, Dwight Howard reincarnated. He just immediately became fucking LeBron's age once he went, once he went to the Lakers. Yeah, <laughs> not for real. Like, he goes from like rookie of the year to shaving the unibrow, and suddenly he's like thirty six years old with a receding hairline. It's didn't like what the fuck's get, going uh, on? Didn't he get hurt? Yeah. Like, which kind of, it's so tough to come back from injuries, uh, especially when it was, I think it was like a, it was a foot, ankle, or knee thing. I don't right? remember what it was, but, but he definitely did get injured. Man, I saw the Lakers were celebrating for the like, new head coach's first win, mm -hmm. and when they were 0-5, and, and I guess they be, then became 1-5, and, and I just like, looked at the comments in that thread, and it was like, I don't want to be a Lakers fan anymore. I can't take it. I don't know how they're so bad. I mean, what do you mean? They're just old. They have no shooters. They're not, they don't have like... Bro, KD's actually not old. Or uh, uh, Anthony Davis is not actually old. I mean, they're not well. They're not a well-gelled team. Like, they're not... Like, they don't have any... Yeah, no, the, no. They don't have the glue pieces. They have a lot of individuals. Like, yeah, they yeah. have LeBron, sure, which is getting older. They have Bro, Anthony Davis. You put LeBron and AD on the same court. Like, they should not be one and five. I, this guy's I getting buckets, though. I finally <laughs> know how M Melissa feels when you guys are talking about sports. I have no idea what the hell you guys are talking about. <laughs> I, I know saying. nothing about the... NBA. I'm like, I don't know who these people are. What is going on? Wow. I know how she feels. I know somebody you do know. Who? Chase Claypool. Oh, oh. you talking about the um, the goner, the 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 Chicago Bear, the Chase Chicago Claypool? Bear, Chase Claypool. It seems like Chase Claypool got traded for a second rounder. The, the Steeler the Nation is rejoicing. I wouldn't go that. No, far. my my dad said to everybody on the fan who are the most critical people, the. Why? Well, it's a good trade for the Steelers. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's a good trade for because for some, Claypool was supposed to be like, I mean, he's he's good, he's talented, but like I don't think he lived up to uh, his hype or How whatever it was supposed to be. This like is only his third years? year. He has a massive right. high side. And he does. He absolutely does. But like, uh, Steeler fans are very critical, and they they don't have a lot of patience. So like. It's, it's, it's not like, just that. It's not just that. He has massive high. He has massive high side. But we already have one of the best receivers in the league in Johnson. And Pickens has the highest side of he, any wideout right. in the league right now. And you were we, so high on Claypool last year. I still and am. I, I still am. I think that like his high side is tremendous. Same thing with Juju. Although I'm less high on Juju now that he's with Mahomes and still isn't producing. Right. We, so it's just yeah. like. He, and, and he's like, just going to be a possession receiver. And we, we know that we're never going to win until we fix our offensive line situation. So, like, getting draft picks, being able to, you know, draft an offensive lineman and, and, and build that up uh, is what the Steelers need to it's, eventually uh, be competitive. It's again. also a little bit of uh, an attitude shift, right? Like, okay. I love Chase and I love Juju both. Mm -hmm. Personality-wise, talent-wise, everything. Like, I, I was a huge, huge fan of both. Okay. But they don't fit that locker room all that well because they're like this young, brash, individualistic type. Uh, Chase did like some, did some like off-season interviews with uh, I Am Athlete and uh, The Pivot. And in both of those interviews, he... He kind of like walked back a little bit of like the the turning the spotlight on you of like the TikToks and stuff like that. But he also like had this air about him where it was just like, man, these coaches think this is such a big deal, but like I'm not letting it interfere, yada, yada, yada. And it's like, well, fine, but you're not producing. And the big thing is that even if it's not interfering with you, it could easily be interfering with the locker room. Like when you look around, the Steelers are built with stars right now, right? Like e even though they're a shit team, Minka is like one of the best safeties in the league. Uh, Watt is easily one of the best edge rushers in the league. I'll agree with those two best, things. I right? agree. George Pickens is going to be one of the best wide receivers. George Pickens is going to be one of the best wideouts in the league. 
uh, Najee has the talent to be one of the best backs in the league, and whoa, whoa, he's whoa. a grinder. Did you see that play on third and two or huh. whatever it was? Which one? Where they he gets the screen and just like does a stutter step, and he could just easily got a first down. Uh, Najee? I think it was Najee. I, I mean, I saw the one where it was like that means third and me. ten, and or second and ten, and he gets like two yards, and he does the first down. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, like, wait till you get a first down. Uh, I mean, the the thing is uh, that like uh, Najee is a keep your head down, grind it out kind of guy. Like mm -hmm. Tomlin speaks about him as being a part of that Steeler culture. You know what I mean? Sure. Like. Like, uh, he didn't go home for Christmas and was just in Pittsburgh in an empty apartment. And, like, Tomlin had him over and, like, got a tree. Like, uh, Cam Hayward, like, took him under his wing. He's like, so good off the field, too. Like, yeah. With charity and, and, and yeah, yeah. So they talk about stuff, this, so, this, yeah. like, winning culture and, and the locker room and everything else. Like, Cam Hayward's another good example. Like, this guy is a, a, an all pro, uh, D lineman. He, he's the anchor of the defense. And he's that dude, right? Like, he's the guy taking the young bucks under his wing, like, teaching them the culture and everything else. Chase was always, like, kind of, eh, I'm, not, I'm not feeling this, right? And then he's not living up to his potential. Like, George Pickens might also be that kind of guy that's like, I don't know, I'm not feeling this type of thing. But the dude's a star. Yeah, he's working. Right? Like, he already has 33 catches, and that's after getting shut out, like, the first four games where he had, like, three catches total. He's going to be a star in this league for sure. Yeah. And same thing with Deontay Johnson. Like he's always had that little bit of an AB type of uh, me, attitude. me, me type of attitude. Yeah. And then he had the issues with drops. But like once the issues with drops came to be, like the fucking guy worked, mm -hmm. you know. And he made sure that he became one of the best possession receivers in the league. So yeah. I, I think like Brian's point is very valid. Like we need picks. We need to anchor this line. Uh, losing Pouncey at center is something that like I don't think people understand how big of a of a drop that was, right. uh, you know, Ben found out real fast last year. Being <laughs> in, for his life. Right, being he doesn't immobile. Run very fast. Right, being an immobile quarterback now who's aging out and losing the anchor of your offensive line that you've had there mm -hmm. for your entire career. It's like, uh, people don't remember, but when he was on the bench, like, crying the year prior, whether or not he was going to come back, the first thing he did was reach out to Pouncey and say, like, give it one more year. Please save me. <laughs> he, he did to Pouncey what Bettis did to uh heinz ward okay. whenever they were making their last or, or vice versa right like ben heinz and bettis all kind of like said like hey one more year guys like ben i think we have ben the literally said the Bettis, like you come back i will get you your super bowl right. ring and he did yeah yeah yeah, yeah so, so like they knew that the court was in place and they and i think he tried to do that then to the pouncey and pouncey's like bro fuck that I, shit. i'm out I'm man like, I'm like i got i got <laughs> I'm I'm close with Aaron Hernandez. I'm <laughs> killing fucking people. Like my brother is like you know he's always getting thrown around in this mix too. Like we are getting the fuck out of the league. We're gonna move to Denmark somewhere and just like forget that we ever existed. Good for him. Good for him. T.J. Hawkinson. He's on the move. The he is. one of the, the one of the top tight ends in the league. Going from the Lions to the Vikings, the six and one Vikings. For four draft picks, a and second, their divisional a trade. Third? Those those don't happen very often. That's because you don't want to. You don't want to make someone in your division stronger. But. Well, they paid a shitload for him. A mm -hmm. second, a third, and two fourth round draft picks. Yeah, for a that. lot. So um, it is pretty cool to see like the strategy shifts from different teams, where it's like the rebuilding slash win now, and then kind of looking through all those things based off of trades, yeah. right? Because once someone a team sacrifices so much future gain for call it the value now. You're like, okay, this is very clearly their, their year, mm -hmm. to speak. or they think that it's their year, and yeah. then you start to uh, invest appropriately. I, I always think of it in terms of fantasy value. I'm like, what's TJ Hawkins' fantasy value? <laughs> it has to go up, right? Corey's a Lions fan. He was like, oh, he's gone. But my, his fantasy value just went up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's pretty dope. Another one is Bradley Chubb. That's the big one. Defensive, that name means nothing to me. Defensive. You know, you the only, only know, Chubb I know is uh, Nick Chubb. Because you Chubb, only yeah. care about fucking fantasy sports. Bro, the Bengals <laughs> got blown out oh, last night. Did they? Man. By the Browns. I, didn't watch it. Mm -hmm. I was at Hooney's party. It, was, uh, it, it was, was like bad. 36 to 13 at the half. Yeah, oh, it, God. They crushed them. Wow. Uh, they looked. The North is like so oh. messy. So uh, to bring this up, so next time uh, for future weekend Warriors. You have one, if you want a winner, and, and, the, and the Bengals are playing a primetime game on the road, 
Just bet the other side. Okay. The one in their in their in their franchise history, they're one and twenty-one. That's incredible. One and twenty-one on the road in prime time. That's wild. <laughs> that's a pretty wild record. Bro. That's because they that's because they were a shit team I mean, that played were, on Thursday so, night for like so the best part of a decade. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess we're just gonna stick to Bengals. Yeah, here there were a basement dweller them. like Jacksonville that played on Thursday night football for like half of the fucking season for a decade. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, that's some pretty wild stat. Talking about wild shit though. There is a play that was done taking place in a Ball State Western Michigan game. Oh like yeah, the Ball State Western. We all like caught it two years ago. No, we didn't all catch no, we it because it, it just went viral today. It li- it's so weird that it just went viral. That's how long it takes for Ball State to get caught up to <laughs> mainstream. Yeah, it is so wild. Take a look at this play. Did you see this, Mark? No. Oh my god, no, this is unbelievable. Down by three. Try a second level Six throw. seconds left in the game. This nice is little screen pass. Bumper. Mute this just in case. They're going for it all at once. I don't yeah, want this to get, is the I don't craziest, want to get demonetized. This is the craziest. Whoop. Uh, I miss Berman, man. Whoop. Whoop. Yeah. <laughs> wow, not to a lineman. No. No, 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 don't worry. Whoop. Don't worry. It doesn't matter who it goes to here. Look at this shit. Guys, you're going the wrong way. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> this is some rugby shit. This is the right? wildest play I've ever How seen. How they didn't throw a forward pass is amazing. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. Well, there's a flag down. Yeah, it's, it's not on them. <laughs> I think I think the I think. How ball, do you get a defensive? I think, ball, I think uh, the, the ball's down. The ball's down. Don't worry, yeah. it's over. No, I think our team had too many men on the field. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, they thought the play was not called, but they thought they, 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 they thought it was over. They thought they landed on the fumble. <laughs> so like half the team is out on the field. The coaches well, are I out mean, there. I mean, somebody. It's still in the coach. Still, what in the how fuck? do you let them score, bro? <laughs> what in the fuck is happening? You have 56 men happened? on the field. Like, somebody just tackle them, take the penalty. What the oh fuck just God. happened? Could you imagine being the equipment boy on the field just fucking hitting them? I want to know. <laughs> I want to know how having 56 men on the field still allows a touchdown. Right. Just fucking right. tackle them and take the penalty. Right. You're already getting a penalty for too many men on the yeah, field. Yeah, you have 56 <laughs> men on the field. <laughs> That is some so, wild like, shit. Like, make them do it again. That okay. is embarrassing. Wow. That was unbelievable. That is embarrassing. Dude. Do we think that, like, um, an, a referee missed a call there? Well, real quick, the it's not the entire play, and it was actually a forward pass somewhere along the lines. So Ball State, uh, the team that was up three before yeah. the touchdown, yeah. won. Oh. oh, okay. Are you that's sure? Probably yes, hundred percent sure. Okay, so that makes sense. That's probably why oh. why we don't we're not seeing it until yeah, now. Yeah, and that why the fuck did it go viral now? Because mm. people left out the context that the team that scored the touchdown didn't wow, actually win. You can so make anything smart. go viral. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wait two so, years. Yeah, so, wait a couple years, people forget about it and then just bring it back. Shut that shit up. Act like it happened last mm-hmm. night. Yeah. Still very crazy. entertaining to watch. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what was entertaining to see. It was a fucking perfect game. Not thrown. But called by the umpire. How about that? That was amazing. In the World Series Game 2, Pat Holberg called a perfect game in the Astros versus Phillies. As, have you, we ever seen that? Do you think we ever I, seen that before? I don't know if, it, if that's ever happened. Apparently, it's the first one since like um, the stats started in 2015, I think I it think, was. I think that's when they started, yeah. I think that's the date mm-hmm. I see, or the year I saw. But wow. um, that's pretty fucking nuts. Yeah, so like the, when you see that little box... Right and then and, and to like he, when it was outside the box he caught a ball when it was inside and that like never happened if you watch any kind of baseball people flip out because that box is there and they're like that was a ball how did he call that a strike <laughs> of it's course like if you remove the box nobody would like you know they wouldn't they wouldn't get so upset but this guy called it perfect on every one it's really hard to do it's pretty entertaining it's pretty yeah. sick I never thought I'd see that I wonder I didn't watch the game were there any um, arguments about any calls or anything not that i remember i wish probably I not wish, i kind of wish something stuck out that'd be funny yeah <laughs> i understand the element of keeping baseball a like human driven game mm-hmm. but at the same time when there is ai that can give the answers so to speak it almost seems like you should just have the ai give the answers and i know there's obviously been a lot of discussion and debate about having the robot umps mm-hmm. or whatever but it seems like it's a lot more practical to have that than have the human error where I mean, yeah, from what from that standpoint it is, from the tradition of the game and how it will change the game is you know yeah, this game I got guess. tradition. A long standing tradition. Fucking managers yeah. have to argue with somebody. Right. What do you think? They're gonna break an umpire? I gotta tell you a robot umpire? I have to tell you, like, watching replay of stolen bases, uh is so jarring to me 
Like they took Missed away calls. Well, they took away the neighborhood play, right? What so, does that mean? so before you used to. As That's a like short, a double play. Yeah, it's like a shortstop turning two. Uh, you could just like be around second base. They did it to avoid like injuries and collisions and things like that. So you didn't actually have to touch the bag. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't you know could, that. You could just like brush around it, over it, whatever. And they they would call it like basically if you're in the neighborhood of the bag, it counts, okay. right? So they took that away, uh, which you know because of replay. Now they're able to obviously like replay things down to a single frame, right? Yep. And there's just so much about uh, like yeah that that obviously was like a former neighborhood play now he's safe at second which is to me insane mm -hmm. so you like That's, the neighborhood play being in of course being i i think like all of these things are there for a reason and it's because the base doesn't move right the base doesn't move but the targets do so the the person sliding is moving there's uh you know you you don't want feet on or around the bag when all that's happening right. but even worse now than that which i think like sucks but like even worse than that now is when people are like stealing bases or uh, you know, you have uh, a play at a bag where you're talking about tagging and things like that, the person running and sliding and doing all that stuff, they can only control their momentum so much, right? right. So now you can freeze frame it to the point where like, let's say you're sliding into second base and you pop up a little bit and you lose contact with the bag. Just a half just, a second. Yeah, yeah just like through sheer physics. Second. Just mm -hmm. through sheer physics. Nothing that you could ever do differently, right? And the glove is on you. You're out. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, it's just fucking insane. It's yeah, like I, I don't, I don't like that. There's a lot that's about funny. football uh, replay with like catches and stuff where I thought mm -hmm. that that got out of control for a long time. Where the, with like the ground causing fumbles and yeah. like all the, I think they finally got that under control in football. I, I think in baseball, what they could do because like if you overslide. Then, then you should be out. But like, if you're like hovering over the base, what should happen right? is the, ba the over... base should have uh, it should have a, a like a pylon, a, a, a perceived right? no, no, no. It should have a perceived yes. vertical, right. That's infinite. That's what I'm saying. Oh yeah, yeah, like yeah. the pylon. Like, like, yeah, yeah, right. So it's just like, so everything above the bag should be considered the bag. Well, yeah, you can't you can't levitate. Anything above you can't, the bag, but like, should be considered but like if you bag. like. If you're sliding and you're coming down on it and you haven't even touched the bag yet, I think if you touch it, I don't it, think that. Go up, I, I don't. Like, I don't yeah. think that matters, yeah, right? Because like high slides, you could uh, you could put a rule in place for that anyway. Yeah. Right. So like if you're sliding mm -hmm. with cleats up, yeah. uh, you could just call guys automatically. Right. But, but like say the guy's running to first and he's going to step down on the bag and he's already above it but didn't t come down on it yet. He shouldn't. Yeah. Stay. So just don't allow it for first base. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right. There's, Every there's, other base because that will yeah. never happen in another base. Right. Right? I mean, so just a, only first base well, that doesn't apply. That's the difference, right? Because at first base, you can run through the base. Correct. Whereas Correct. at second and third, if you run through, you are out. Correct. Right. So like at first base, it just the rule would never apply because yeah. you're never sliding into it anyway. And even mm -hmm. if you are, it doesn't matter because you have the ability to run through. Uh, then every other base, it should be like a, a silo effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they, they are, uh, I know they got rid of the, the neighborhood play, but they, they are making the bases bigger. You know that, right? No, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, so they're going from... Uh, 15 inches across to 18 inches okay. across. I mean, um, which is doesn't seem like a lot, but when you see the bases, they're they're definitely bigger, which is going to help with injuries and that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So instead of having the neighborhood play, they're just going to make the bag size bigger and then hope that that changes things. Yeah, it's just tough because like there's such an art to turning two, and there's so much like footwork involved yeah. and mm -hmm. all that other stuff that, uh, you know, you're you're forcing them to figure out ways to like toe drag in a manner that maintains contact. Mm -hmm. And now, again, you can freeze frame it, right? So, like, maybe they're dragging their toe, but it's as they're transitioning and the ball hasn't quite hit the glove yet. So now they transition through the bag as the ball is hit, uh, hitting their mitt and the guy's safe again. It's just like, yeah. wow, Jesus like, Christ. Looking at that footage right there, like, that we're playing on the screen and seeing people just run through the guy on second is ridiculous. Well, so that's the other thing is that you could still take people out. Yeah. Like, the takeout slide is still a part of the game. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's like now you're forcing uh, infielders. You're you're really putting infielders in jeopardy because they're the ones <laughs> taking hits like so, fucking quarterbacks. Right. So real quick, <laughs> real quick, going back to uh, going back to football, the trade deadline just ended. Okay, what do we um, got? What we we got? got we got um, one at the last minute. Naeem Hines going from the Colts going to the Buffalo Bills. Who is Naeem mm -hmm. Hines? He's, he's their a, he's, third he's down their, back. No, he, yeah, he's their he's their second. There's like their backup to. He spells. Uh, 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 wow, I can't remember his name now. Jesus. Um, Heinz Ward? No. No, not Heinz Ward. Number one. Hmm? 
Oh my God, oh, Jonathan, Jonathan Taylor. Taylor. Taylor, yeah. Oh but, yeah, but like yeah. really, he's mostly used as a. He, he, yeah, he's very talented. It's just that, that uh, you know Jonathan Taylor's like a beast. So, um, and then Kareem Hunt is staying in Cleveland, which there was a lot of rumors. Yeah, the Jets um, were talking about him. Yeah, they so he looks like he's staying. Like, and that. Brandon Cooks, who uh, also was a lot of rumors, as also staying with the Texans. Wow, I so, can't believe the Texans. Um, that's kept where we're them. at. Why wouldn't the Texans just get rid of him for like a fucking Oh, the Broncos are Senate. also trading for Jets pass rusher Jacob Martin. I think Fucking was... Adam Scheffner over here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I got, I got, I got uh, all the alerts. I was surprised to see Chase go to Chicago. Uh, I thought Green Bay was going to make a, a really strong play. I, I thought he would go to a, more of a contender. Thing. Green Bay was pushing hard for it. That was how yeah. I first they, found out. Because they're, they, need, they need a receiver. Desperately. Yeah. They're so yeah. hurt. I mean, I'm surprised Green Bay didn't just start selling. Who were they going to sell? They already did. They got rid of Van Adams. That is probably true. There's nobody left. I'm sure they got a couple people. Were they going to send Aaron Rodgers somewhere? No, they got that. Um, <laughs> Man, we faded a I mean, fucking. They got Lazar. They got, yeah, they got Spalding, Dylan. Whatever is like, received, the, we uh, really faded a nightmare of him coming to Pittsburgh. Can you imagine having Aaron Rodgers for the next three years? I mean, he has, a, he has an injury right now. Like, he's playing. I don't care what he has. He's I, old. I don't, he's I don't, old. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if, it's, if um, he's the problem. I, I don't think he's not the problem. Like mm. I, I don't think I he's just think, Aaron Rodgers. He's he won the fucking MVP made. last year. Uh, he's just yeah. injured, guys. Like just, just give him a minute. Like he might. They bro, still might make the old. playoffs. He is old. Like they. He looks like Tom Brady, who is also yeah. old. People said this. <laughs> people said that last year when they lost the first game, it was like it's just a game, and it was like, oh, he doesn't care, and then he got W's. Yeah. Tom Brady's actually not playing that bad either, which is crazy. It's just it's just that. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Fuck Tom Brady. Yeah, I mean, Tom Brady is, you know, they're kind of getting their asses. Yeah, well. they suck. You know, they stay true to your roots, Brian. All right. You can't love Tom Brady now. That's true. We can't. We never will. Let's see what's going on here. Is it that time? Is that time? Is that time? Uh, it could be that time. It, it could be that time. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. It's time to give away a 12K package. Well, to the WPT championship. I'm excited for this. 15 million guaranteed in that tournament? 15 million guaranteed. It's probably going to be like three and a half up top. Wow. Three and a half M's. It's somebody in this podcast chat is about to get a chance to fucking win. I'm pumped. I'm, I'm pumped ready. too. Yeah. Who's doing it? You're doing it. I'm doing it? Yep. Doing it. Let's fucking do it. Wow, there's a lot of electric. Let's get it. a Poppins going in. I'm doing Look at it. all of these Who members. Who is it going to Hold be? On. Uh, make sure, because we refreshed, turn, uh -huh. the, turn the luck up. Turn the luck up? Yep. Oh, okay, I got you. I can see it from here. Yep. Okay, I'm going to do it two times. The first time is not a winner. What? Yeah, I'm going to do it two. Just make sure everything's working, you're right? Here goes one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Don't. That's not a winner. Okay. And now I'm gonna hit it again. This is and the winner. This will be our winner. Scrum. Scrum. <laughs> My boy, Scrum. You are the winner. You know Scrum? No, I don't know who the fuck Scrum. Uh, but he is going to be the winner. Let's make sure he's here. Scrum, Scrum where are, you are you in there? He's Show in. yourself, Scrum. He's in. He's in. He's in. He's in. You see him? He's in. He said, "Yo, yo, where you at? I can't see you." He's in there. All right, Scrum. Is he a member? Yes. Scrum, do us a favor and go hit up. <laughs> Corey Paget says, "Hey, Scrum here." <laughs> <laughs> Scrum, Scrum Paget. Uh, I'm trying to at him, but my chat is being stupid. Mobile sucks. All right, so we're trying to at you and basically say... Um, I'll take care of it. Just keep rolling. All right, all right. We're going to keep rolling then. Well, congratulations, Scrum. Congratulations. That is so awesome. We're excited Make for sure you. Make sure to, uh, uh, you know, come over and say hi to us uh, over, at the, over at the win. Over oh, the yeah. Win we, we will be there. During the, uh, during the tournament. We will be there with a live pod. During the tournament. Day, wow. Wow. day 1A, day 1B, and 1C. We'll be doing a live pod on set. And that's going to be pretty exciting. That's going to be fun. Maybe we'll have all yeah. the winners that we give all the, the seats to come hang with us yeah, for a minute. Yeah, come, come say hi. Scrum, that's it. You're I locked think, in. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot more seats in the foreseeable future. I was oh, just yeah, about 35 to say that. more. This 30 guy over here is just going to be winning seats, and he's going to give them to you. 
And I can't wait. We can't wait win. to do that. We cannot oh, wait. How to many do that. I have to win before they just let me give them to people on the podcast? <laughs> wait, do they not allow you to give them to people? On the no. Podcast? I have oh. to. I have to keep it fair. Oh no! Oh, I was hoping. No. I was we hoping to f- get a seat. I mean, I am a member. I mean, I could. My name could get drawn. You took us our names out, didn't you? No, but drawing. if if you guys would have got drawn, we would have just rolled it again. I, know, yeah. I would have what? We would have what? We would have rolled it again. We would have who? Imagine Connor rolls it. We would have rolled it again. Connor wins the shit. Connor wins the shit, man. This is, for the, this is for the listeners, not the actual members. I listen to this podcast. shit every day, too. Look at this. You hear this? I've actually listened more than anybody on here. I go home, I listen. I'm like, all right, can I do anything better? How do I do? How do I improve at this? I don't know. Let's figure it out. So if I fucking... I listen. <laughs> <laughs> Listening is a good skill to have. You want to well, do listen it. to this shit because poker is coming back to the East Coast. We're going back to the Borg, baby. It seems that January 4th to January 8th, the Borgata Championship event is the coming. What? The Borgata? <laughs> Did I say it wrong? You you fumbled, but you got it. Uh, GF, GFY. It yeah. GFY. That's causing problems. Yeah, yes. stop causing problems. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Just well, they'll be boasting a $5,300 championship event with $3 million in the prize pool and $1 million going to first place. It seems like there's going to be a bunch of other tournaments. I see a 540 calling the return. There's going to be a 1K mystery bounty, I think, with a 250K top pull. Are we all going to this? I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm trying to you know, work the back channels, try to see if we can get a pod going you know, at the Borgata. I don't mm. know. I don't know. Sponsored so, trip. I don't know. I, I, so his, for why sponsored trip. I was, I was like, hey, guys, you know, like, we might want to go to the <laughs> Borgata. And, you know, we really like having our podcast going mm-hmm. every day of the week. Yeah. So, you know, maybe we can, we can work something out. So as someone that has never been to the Borgata, can you explain to me the significance of the Borgata return? East Coast poker on the Northeast. So Maryland Live <laughs> was kind of around and still around, but the Borgata was a bigger place. So that was where, like, that is where the... That's where New York went. Yeah. So That's like, where the tri-state area... Right. When the poker boom was kind of happening, the, the Borgata would have, like, twice a year would have these giant uh, tournament events. And it was one of, like, the, the biggest, biggest fields on the east coast so it's a massive stop it was like bef- yeah it was, it was a massive stop it was before like florida got huge and of course you had foxwoods which is always kind of big but like you have like you know you have philly you have new york even people from uh boston would come down and play so you'd have that concentration of uh population huge population areas and it would just lead to like you know great poker and huge fields i and see it's coming back, back. it's always fun Borgata to the tri-state area near yeah. you. The bar- Borgata's going to be great. It'll be a million to first, if I had to guess. Yeah, it says a million. Yeah. To I'm first? Yeah. million guaranteed. Wow, guaranteed sick. million guaranteed uh, first. Yeah, the Borgata stop was always big. Uh, it started to wean off a little bit pre-COVID, where it was like 900, 800 the first, but that's still pretty big for 3,500 re-entry. Fuck, yeah, man. That's yeah. fucking huge. It started to yeah. wean off with 800 for first. Because it was always over a million yeah, that's huge. for a decade plus. Um, the only issue with Borgata is that it's an expensive trip. Explain. Um... The way that the hotel worked, if I mean, it's been a while since I've been there. Well, first of all, I never fucking win there, so that's a huge issue. <laughs> that's why it's expensive. It's, it's you the, never win. It's yeah, that's casino. why it's expensive. It's the only <laughs> casino in the, the United States that I'm a net loser in <laughs> lifetime. It has sure. nothing to do with the hotel <laughs> rates. Um, I just flights. But I, also, like, if you're not a black card, it's almost impossible to get like reduced room rates. Hmm. So we would go for the series, and it would be like two weeks, and we'd be looking at like three k in hotel. Aren't bills. they tied to MGM? They are yeah. right. So yeah. so like your card would probably transfer over. Yeah, that. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, you were they good. always? They were no, always they tied to MGM. Not right? always. They were. No. Okay, they yeah, now so, are. Uh, they haven't. I haven't been there while they were tied to MGM. So yeah. it sounds it, it like you might a become a winner now. I might wow. become a winner. Yeah. yeah. I, on the other hand, have already booked my um, Caesar's Rewards room at Harris. From the second to the fifth, just in case. That's what I used to do too. <laughs> like, I, I would like, stay at Harris for like twelve dollars. <laughs> yeah, literally. I, I think it costs twenty five dollars in tax, and um, I have to book the weekend later on. So I'm my, I'm trying to get us. You know, I want us there. You're trying to get it popping at the board. I'm trying to get it popping at the board. You know, I feel like it's it's fucking East Coast poker. Like, what's, what was the last time you? What was your last experience at the board? Oh. Oh, Tell me. It's been it's been a decade since I've been there. Well, uh, Matt's least, definitely just been losing, so yep. we know how that's been going. Mm-hmm. My last experience there was uh, losing a. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> what did I lose? Like an eighty k pot. He's like, how many zeros? He's counting the zeros. I think it was like an eighty or hundred k pot to Darren Elias at twenty five fifty. Oh, oh no! Uh, 
Was we, this Poker Night in America or something? No, we were no, just playing an open 2550 game. Uh, we are right both sitting giga deep. <laughs> uh, and he five bet me pre. I called with queens and yeah, it came like game. five high, check, check, turn queen. Check, check. Oh my God. Yeah. So it was like five, three deuce, turn queen, two hearts. Uh, I have queens, no heart. <laughs> Look, bro, this was like 2017. He knew he had the ace four. He's out there. No, he didn't have the ace four. Ah. This was this was like 2017, and I, I fucking knew. I hit him with pot and a half. Pot yeah, and a half with top set. Check check. <laughs> Nobody else is doing that uh, shit. Check check. That's flop. why everybody said I suck. He just took aces to the face. You think he has aces when he checks know. back flop? Never. Oh. I don't know what he. He had. fucking called with ace king. Oh jeez. That's why he's the goat. River four, and I'm just like, check call. He, I check, he bet like, I think he jammed for like pot. And I'm just like, call, but it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> what in the fuck is that? Well, when he checks back flop, a lot of his range is going to be ace high. Yeah, obviously. So uh, you obviously call with queens when there's a wheel. I mean, what are you going to do, man? It's, your, it's probably your second best hand behind an ace. Old range. Old range. Yeah, I didn't have it in me. Yeah, you don't like folding, and neither do I. No, that seems not like fun. You know, I thought I could shake the ace king on turn for pot and a half. What was SPR on flop? If you like, kind of can briefly remember. Three, four. I mean, we had like pot behind on river, so uh, five maybe. Was there a flush draw? Yeah, two hearts. Wow, he definitely could play. A g Did he have ace king with a suit? Mm, he might have had one heart. Wow, he could be all in. This Where? is early could, January, Conrad. This is going to I mean, be January. Jammed, I believe dude, it, it got snapped. You see that, Burke? I believe it starts the second. This um, oh, thank God. It's not going to be my birthday. That's the, the championship is the 4th to the 8th. Right. Oh, so smart because uh, PCA. Yeah. I'll be in Bahamas see, for my so birthday be, this year. Yeah, oh, you'll, you'll be fine yeah. at Bergata. Yeah, that's oh, true. We got to figure that out. So that means we get fucking wrecked in the Bahamas. Oh, so bad. But you don't worry. The Bahamas are way more expensive. You're going to win a bunch of money in Atlantic City, so it's fine. But you'll be even by the end of the month. We just need to figure out a way to make this a traveling podcast. I've come to the conclusion. Mm. Uh, that's super doable. You know, like we just need to be in the PCA. We need to be at Borgata. Like, there's places we have to be. And it's we super doable. They just got to make it easy for us to do from there. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll talk to the people. The well, people like the us. Tom's on it. Yo, Tom, get on that shit, man. You yeah, know, like, Tom, I said Tom a text this morning. I was like, yo, Tom, we're a traveling podcast. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna open it, this, that. Like, we, we're traveling people. The yeah. show mm -hmm. goes on. The show must go on, and we must give it to the people. What's popping, Guap? To answer your question, Brian, the last time I was on the East Coast, I was bartending at Secrets in Ocean City. Oh. Yo, I was a fucking what? bouncer at Secrets. I wonder if they were at the same time. That would yeah. be amazing. Wait a minute. Wait, yeah. what year? Uh, this is 20 years ago, maybe 19 years ago. Yes. Oh, my uh, God. I, you guys might have been there at the oh same time. I was that a bouncer at Secrets my 21st, my, the summer of my 21st. So it would have been 2003. <laughs> I was a bouncer at Secrets. And then I was also a bouncer at the uh, Ocean Club, which was across the street. Oh, my God. And it was like a 50s and over club. So here's the racket we used to run. It was, uh, I was living with my best friend at the time, Gumby, uh, Simmons, and John and Tracy. Oh, and Glenn. And all of us got jobs bouncing at Secrets. And then we also got jobs uh, working at Ocean Club, working security. Like That's funny. We used to go to a place called... Is it the paddock? The paddock? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After work, we would we'd go hang out there. Dude, Ocean City, Maryland was so fun, and it was so different from Vegas. I was so used to going out here, leaving like at midnight, 1 o'clock to go to the clubs, whereas out there you were wearing like sandals and shorts and leaving at 9 6 p.m. Yeah. yeah, 7 p.m. Yeah. yeah, the Salty Dog was a Steelers bar. We would always hang out there. It was fucking great. But so what ended up happening is I worked one night at Secrets bouncing. And I couldn't take it anymore because like, the, <laughs> bro, the bouncers were like, they were just like these meat heads that were looking for fights. So I worked one night and I had to stand in front of this door that like led to the kitchen or some shit. And my whole sole purpose was like to not let anybody through that door. Right. So I'm just standing there and I'm like watching literally all my roommates get into fist fights. And I'm just like, this is not me. Like I'm not about this life, but I'm standing in front of this door and all night long, these hot girls keep coming up to me and they're like, what's behind the door? And I'm like, 
I can't tell you that. <laughs> and they're trying so hard. Like they think that I'm the gatekeeper to like the land of the free. Yeah. And I'm just like, I, I mean, it's, it's a glorious place back there, but I can't let you back there. And so like, I'm just like getting all these numbers and just like basically working and flirting at the same time or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I quit after that night. Like, it's just too much. It's too stressful. Like we're, we're wanding people down as they walk in. Like, uh, so I worked in front of that door and I worked at the entry, um, like <laughs> taking IDs and shit. Wow. I was like, this is too much responsibility. I don't want to do this. Ocean Club pays the same. They let me set my own hours. And it's like literally a 50s and older <laughs> club. So I go over there instead, right? And what ends up happening is my roommate Gumby gets on parking lot duty at Secrets. <laughs> so the way this works is they're literally across the highway from one another. Gumpy, scrimpy. And Secrets has <laughs> like, Secrets is the club in Ocean City, Maryland. It's massive. So they have like two or three massive parking lots and he's working one of them. Well, on the weekends, they fill. So I would work the Ocean Club on the weekends. By the way, this place, you would love this place. Secrets is, Secrets is like a bar that's like on the water, right? Like, no, it's right? not on the water. It's, it, it, it's oh, this. There it is. Wow. Wait, isn't there? I used it's, to acro only... it's across the street or across the highway. From, uh, maybe oh, it, it is in the water. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing a whole bunch of mm. fucking. That's weird because Ocean Club's everywhere. on the water too, but it's across the highway. But anyway. Wow. Uh, so Secrets is like there's like four or five different areas and they're all themed differently there's like a beach area and a club area and like dope. all this stuff right it's dope it's where like all the 20 somethings go uh and hang out ocean club is like what you would envision like your parents going to right awesome so they had this, would be. they had this in-house <laughs> band they had this in-house band that was like uh an r&b band and they mostly played like like oldies soul type stuff yeah so it was like a lot of barry white and and stuff like they were so fucking good what are you trying to say this shit was ah! popping like that's every every weekend like i think melissa and i did guy. that too on yeah the yeah so so like this is the stuff they were playing is such a good time like we weren't actually really working security nobody ever got like yeah. in fights or anything it was just a bunch of old ladies flirting with us all night long it was great right so i would work there on the weekends and i would ask for parking lot duty and the whole reason we had parking lot duty at Ocean, or, or um, Secrets? No, 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 at, at the Ocean Club. Well, it was to go to Secrets. It was to keep people who were going to Secrets out. Ah. Because they, they didn't get that many. They, they maybe had like 100 members, right? So they just wanted to make sure that their members had parking. Yeah. And they wanted to ensure that nobody from Secrets came in. Right. Like, it was literally just a fuck you to them. That was it. So I would work the gate there, right? And I would stand there, and all night long, Gumby would be sending me traffic. <laughs> he'd be like, he, like, even if they weren't full, he'd be like, yeah, we're full. Like, go across the street to Ocean Club. They'll park you. So people would come over and they'll be like, uh, I was told to come over here to park. I'm like, you're going to Secrets? They're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I can't park you here. I'm sorry. They're like, what do you mean? I was like, this is Ocean Club members parking only. They're like, what can I do for you? I'm like, 50 bucks. Well, for 25 bucks, I can let you in. And we just ran a racket. <laughs> like we're getting paid like nine dollars an hour, but we're making like four or five hundred bucks a weekend and just chopping the dark it up. Dark side is real. It was so good, and like nobody gave a shit because the parking lot was never you, full. You 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 uh, cut Guapo in on all that money uh, while he was at the. I didn't was see a cent. Not a cent. Damn, wow. Guapo. Guapo was behind the bar. You know how much pussy away? he was getting. Dude, it's, be fair, it's so funny. That, <laughs> it's so funny that you just said that. It was a good summer. Yeah, of course it was. <laughs> of course it was, man. If you're working at Secrets, like you just had girls crawling on you. The I mean, context here is so wild to me because when you were doing this, I was four. <laughs> <laughs> I was in preschool. This is fucking great. I was in preschool. You're out here <laughs> saying, oh, for 25 bucks, you can get in. I can't even imagine like the moral gatekeeper of you at 21 being like, you know what? I can't let you in, but like for 25, you got me. Uh, you got honestly, me. I struggled with it, but at the same time, I was broke as fuck. Yeah, and, it was like, easy. It, it wasn't that difficult I, and i wasn't like into poker yet i just like discovered it yeah um man that summer was wild gumby ended up meeting his future wife there uh but there, there was, at, at the club uh at ocean club yeah wow. she was one of the waitresses um but there was like this whole thing where uh, you know he was he was messing around that summer he was filling his oats sounds she, like you guys like, walked, all had a great summer she yeah. walked in on him with another girl at oh, one point geez. like it was, it was wild <laughs> Uh, we met this other group of girls that went to college like five miles down the road from where I was going to college. Uh, so we like hung out with them all summer. But man, I, yeah, I was good. Like not not in a good way, but like I didn't do anything that summer. I just made money and played baseball. That's nice. <laughs> I played in this summer league that was like uh, it was a D1 because they have um, I don't know if it's Delaware State. Delaware has a major D1 program uh, okay. like 
40 miles away in Salzburg, Maryland, or just okay. outside Salzburg, Maryland. And then Salzburg State is like a, a D3 powerhouse in baseball. So they put together this like summer league and I got my way into it. <laughs> I remember uh, it was me coming off my sophomore year in college and uh, I had busted my ass to get a starting job, but I just cracked under the pressure. I went like one in seven with like a eight ERA. Fuck. Uh, Rough times. I like, I like led the team in strikeouts and walks. Like I just had a real shit season. Okay. Uh, so my coach that I met that summer, he like let me on. And uh, the first game I come out and I throw like a one hitter and he's, you know, like patting me on the back and everything else. We talk after the game. He's like, I was a little hesitant after seeing your stats. <laughs> I, was like, I, I wasn't, I wasn't super confident in giving you the ball. I was I'm like, gonna be honest with you, not impressed. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but I had like a really sick summer. I ended up throwing a two hit shutout that went eleven innings, and I threw all eleven. I ended up throwing like two hundred and fifteen pitches. What the fuck? Yeah, wait, it was wait, wild. Wait, hold on. Why? Honestly, it was stupid. It's but ridiculous. It was, it was for a playoff spot, and we oh. didn't have anybody else, and like I would not let him take the ball. Yeah. I, I was talking. It's funny because I was talking with a. I was talking about this with some people that go to Robs, mm -hmm. uh, and some of the people there, are very bright futures in baseball. We were kind of talking about the whole pitching thing and how many pitch counts, this, that, and whatever. And I was thinking about it, and as someone that's older than the people in high school, but also knowing not being that far removed from being part of the sports and part of the competitive nature of not wanting to give something up, mm -hmm. but also at the same time realizing the long-term scope of having a future in the sport to begin with, there has got to be a give and take of how much you can actually pitch versus really wanting to win yep. at the same time acknowledging that your future is more important than a specific It's around spot. 100 pitches for those guys. Right? Yeah. And even um, that is when you're like 14, 15 as a freshman versus um, a senior, right? It's, yeah. There's a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, there's a difference for sure. It's just like... But they're only playing seven innings too. So like a good pitcher playing... Uh, a good pitcher throwing a seven inning game, he's going to average like 75, 80 pitches in a complete game outing. And they're yeah. not going to throw complete games all the time. So they're going to throw like five most of the time. And they're going to average somewhere in the neighborhood of like 50 to 65. There is a Sweet. number now for maximum amount of pitches you can throw in high school or no i don't think so wow i mean i'm sure there has to be i don't think so there has to be some type of role in most states mm. that'd be crazy like, i was just you gotta think about like people trying to protect their protect the kids like it's so arbitrary though like this notion that we only have x amount of fastballs in our arm is kind of nonsensical right? sure it might be but like to the public eye it's definitely a viewing point like of hey this is a safety mark measure well there's clearly a difference Maybe. between a freshman but you and could say that's that a senior you should say like by that metric then they shouldn't be allowed to throw curveballs sure but like that's not gonna be that's gonna take way less wear and tear off their arm than throwing extra fastballs I understand i feel like they don't even throw curveballs until high Fuck school they don't like until high school. These kids, no, are, these kids school. are fucking snapping these right now. These kids they, are nasty. These kids that work out with us at Rob's already have D1 scholarships signed. Oh, no, I know. I know. These kids They're are, 14. Yeah, I know. That's sick. When I was 14, I was in senior league. <laughs> these guys are traveling the country. Yeah. It's insane. Like, I feel so do. slighted. <laughs> That's what Gage used high to do, High school man. pitch count rules by state. Okay, so they do it by state, it seems. Yeah, this makes sense. Man, I feel like there should be... It should be like age bracketed versus state mandated bracketed because there's clearly the difference between a freshman and a senior yeah it seems like only connecticut uh massachusetts so basically the northeast i mean do not have pitch whatever limits. it's like 110 to 120 like that's, all yeah, which is that's really basically simple. no that's basically no limit exactly yeah that's no it's unlimited, it's unlimited. <laughs> didn't he play baseball for a bit with the yankees he was uh, he, i don't know if he nah. made it to the show but he played for nc state yeah i thought he played like a like a exhibition thing oh yeah i think he did something. play something like we were trying he, to get him maybe or something i don't know man you think he did play an exhibition this guy game is or so something. fucking cringe <laughs> I, I, did you I, see I, did I you like see it. he ended his interview with the let's ride yeah yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> nation, baby. let's ride <laughs> and, and the three report, and she was like <laughs> <laughs> three and four team talk, being the two and five team over in london talking yeah. about let's ride listen well you know you doing all those fucking squats in the aisle it pays off listen man he was ready for one i I think it's endearing. That's because you know you're cringe. No, nah, that's that's because you've only gotten a glimpse of what we've exposed you to this year. This has been going on for like 13 years. 
<laughs> he's stick he's staying true to character. He's you like, you gotta listen self help. To, you gotta listen to Ryan Russillo's take on, on Russell Wilson. Like nobody loves this guy more than Ryan Russillo. I gotta listen to this. He just like thinks he's the biggest clown in the NFL and like I'm here for it. Hey, he gets paid, he gets money, he's I mean, paid to, to be fair, there's been some people in our comments, you know. Look up who Russell Wilson is. Children's Hospital. Yeah, he, Children's Hospital. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, man, that's great. He's a good he person for the to community. Save face. But he is the cringiest nah, motherfucker. Nah, for that bullshit. <laughs> like, yeah, he does good things, but it's all PR, man. Like yeah. everything about this dude is PR, and he's corny as fuck. <laughs> that's true. Right? It's like there are other like Cam Hayward's the dude. Whenever it comes to like uh, doing well in the community, like he's the guy right. who I can't remember what the name of the award is. It might be the Art Rooney Award. Actually. No, it's not the Art no, Rooney. No, there's it's, a um, there's an award for service. Like I know a Villanueva. Uh, one. It's the yeah, human, yeah. humanitarian yeah. award, but I forget who it is. I, I, I legit think it might be the Art Rooney Award. I, I could be wrong. We'll look it up. But I only sure. say that because I think the award actually does uh, have some parallel to the Steelers uh, franchise. But anyway, okay. like Cam's the dude who's competing for this every year, and he's quietly yeah. doing it. Yeah. You know, he's out there booping kids on the nose at the children's hospital and shit like that. Russell Wilson's bringing a fucking entire squad with him to film it and take photos and. <laughs> You know, basically leverage this shit into his uh, his cringy ass personality. <laughs> That's right. The man is unlimited. <laughs> Talking about unlimited. If your name isn't Scrum and you want a chance to win a 12k package, our boy, Damon Fucking Burton, is giving away a 12k package oh. on the Drawing Dead vlog or Drawing Dead show this week on Sunday. He'll be doing a live stream, I believe, of while playing the WPT Global tournament uh it's the walter payton award walter payton yeah, i had that on my tongue but uh, I, didn't, I didn't want to be wrong that makes sense so i'm mm -hmm. definitely way off <laughs> uh, that has nothing to do with this uh, you know, it's, just, it's built into your brain to think that everything is resolved well you know what it is i think it's I, this, it I think that it's a Steeler like wins it yeah. every fucking year <laughs> maybe that's why or well, maybe villain uh, villanueva was a Steeler when yeah, he won right yeah yeah so Jay, only, Jamin's giving up, giving away another seat. Jamin is giving oh, away a 12k man. seat this That's Sunday. All these seats just giving away. Berkey's gonna have, probably win two. I'll or three have three this more week. seats yeah. locked up before. Yeah, before stay that tuned. Happens. There'll be we, more we, to give away. We want to give it away to the people. You know, we want to give it away. And if you, we know you don't, you want to give it your own shot. You can go over to WP, uh, WPT Global and download it right now. They're running satellites to this 12k every day yeah for anybody who is in a territory that accepts it you can download wpt global for your chance to win your way to the wpt world championship at the win this december every single day they're giving away a seat on sundays they give away eight all of these are overlaying so it's massive massive value to anybody who's capable of playing Hon get in there honestly and at least like for myself if you guys win a seat through a solve for why giveaway uh Please try to get in touch with me through Twitter or Instagram or anything, and I'll try to help you as much as I can before the tournament starts. Like, if you have any nice MTT you questions, Let's any uh, things along those lines, uh, just I hit see me up. questions. I had one for you earlier. You did. I know Landon's in the works trying to put something together for you know these giveaway winners, but that'd be pretty dope. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Landon's trying to trying to give, give give a little back, you know. Yeah, he's trying to give some insight to these winners, you know. Yeah, it's like a good it. opportunity, and I'm um, I want to try to help maximize it if uh if you're if you want it so let's fucking go awesome well on that note like subscribe write a message leave us a comment you know join our community show us some love and we'll be back tomorrow for another episode of the only friends podcast peace, Unlimited. peace.